Inspired by the macrame bobble covers that are so popular right now for the design of this Christmas ornament, I really love how the beautiful star pattern shines on a simple ornament. It adds an air of elegance and sophistication to an otherwise boring bobble. Stay tuned! For a full list of supplies, see the description box below. So the first thing I want to talk about is the size of these Christmas baubles. So this particular one is actually rather large. If you look at it, it's about the size of a softball. And if you look at this one, it's slightly smaller. It still fills my hand, but it's a little bit larger than the average Christmas bobble. So I'm going to show you how I am determine the size. For lack of a better term, I kind of measure from North Pole to South Pole to get the measurement. And so this one is about six inches without the cover on it. It's really more like five and a half inches. This one here is about five inches. And like I said, without the cover on, they're a little bit smaller if you measure it. And see, this one says it's three and a half inches, but I want you to notice here, I will measure from the North Pole to the South Pole, and it is actually more like five inches. So all three of these that I used are a little bit on the bigger side. I do like to use bigger baubles so that the pattern really shines through. So if you go with anything smaller, definitely go with a smaller hook and smaller crochet thread. This particular bobble I used for this one and I filled it up and that's another option you could do. You could fill it up with like cellophane or something really pretty. Um, but today I'm going to use this one, and I'm going to also be using this Curio size 3 thread from We Crochet, and this is the color Turmeric. If you would like to purchase some for yourself, I will link it in the description box below for you. I'm also going to be using possibly this size 3.75 or this one here that's an E 3.5 millimeter hook. It just kind of depends. I'm also going to be using some beads. Now for these you could use either the 4 millimeter beads. So the smaller the bobble or the thread, I definitely would go smaller beads. Or you could use these 6 millimeter beads. These are seed beads that you can find at Walmart. I'm pretty sure that's where I got these. But just about any craft store carries them. Or you could use 8 millimeter beads. So the bigger the bobble, the bigger the bead that you can use. So as you can see, this might, would probably be too big for this particular bobble. These right here are actually the 6 millimeter beads. As you can see, they're a little more proportionate. That's probably my favorite size, to be honest. And this is the four millimeter beads. They're just the silver ones like this. Which beads you use will depend on what size of bobble you use. So today I'm going to be using these supplies that you see right here. So the first thing that I'm going to do is thread my beads onto my yarn. And I want you to notice here that because these beads are so small, I'm using a regular sewing needle, but it has a larger eye. And it's important if you want to be able to get your crochet thread through it, that it has a slightly larger eye. And you are going to need 28 beads if you plan to follow my pattern that I have here exactly. How many beads you need will definitely depend on the size of bobble that you have. So if you have a bigger bobble, you may want to add more beads. I decided to use the E 3.5 millimeter hook. So to begin, you will chain 12. Now 
Now you will be careful not to twist your chain and slip stitch into the first chain to create a ring. Now we're going to be working into this ring, so chain one, that will not count as a stitch. And we are going to place 20 single crochet in that ring. I'm going to slightly speed up the video so you don't have to watch me make each stitch. Just make 20 single crochet inside the ring. When you are done making 20 single crochet, slip stitch into the top of the first single crochet to join. Now we're going to move on to round two. We're going to chain one, this will not count as a stitch, and we're going to put two single crochet in each stitch around. So put two single crochet in the same stitch and in each stitch around. It's very important that when you are done with this round that it is a multiple of 10. So if you adjust the stitches in this pattern in the first two rounds, make sure that you end round two with a multiple of 10. So go ahead and put two single crochet all the way to the end. So as you can see, it's sort of ruffling up. This is the end of round two. It's not gonna really matter. Once you put it on your Christmas bobble, it's really gonna stretch. Most important thing is, is does it fit over the top of where you are going to be putting it? Take a moment right now to put it onto your bobble. See, it doesn't matter with the bobble that I'm using because there is no metal, but in the old timey bobbles, you are definitely gonna have to make sure that it fits over the top. So go ahead and just try it on for size. And as you can see, this one fits just fine. So slip stitch to join, and now we are going to begin our stitch pattern. You are going to begin by chaining nine. This beginning chain nine will count as a treble crochet and a chain five space. Now we are going to place a treble crochet in the same stitch. And as you can see, it makes a V stitch. Chain three, skip four. We are going to be placing a single crochet in that fifth stitch right there, but before we do, we are going to slide a bead onto our working yarn. So go ahead and grab a bead and push it all the way until it is flush against your hook. So again, we are going to skip four stitches and single crochet in that fifth stitch. And as you can see, there's the bead in that single crochet. Chain three skip four. We are going to be placing a treble crochet in the next stitch, so I went ahead and yarned over twice. So place a treble crochet, chain five, and another treble crochet in that same stitch. I'm going to refer to this as a V stitch from here on out. As you can see, it makes the letter V. So a V stitch is a treble crochet, a chain five, and a treble crochet. And between each single crochet is a chain three.
So chain three, skip four. We're gonna make another beaded single crochet. So slide your bead up to your hook. Now we are going to skip four stitches and place a single crochet in the fifth stitch. Now it's time to make another V-stitch. So we're going to chain three, skip four, and place a V-stitch in the fifth stitch. Again, that is a treble crochet, a chain five space, and another treble crochet in the same stitch. This is what it should look like. Now it's time for another beaded single crochet. So we'll chain three and place your bead next to your hook. We're gonna skip four stitches and place a single crochet in the fifth stitch. Chain three, skip four, make a V stitch. And we've got one more beaded single crochet to make. So we're going to chain three, place your bead next to your hook. Skip four stitches and put a single crochet in the fifth stitch. chain three and now we are going to slip stitch to join into the fourth chain of our beginning chain nine so slip stitch into the chain that is the fourth from the bottom this is what your piece should look like you should have four beaded single crochet and four v stitches on each corner so now we are going to begin the next round and really we need to be in the center of this chain five. So we are going to slip stitch into the next two chains to get us there. It can be challenging with this small thread. So here you see I'm at the top of the chain five and that's where I wanna be. So go ahead and chain one. And now we are going to start with a beaded single crochet in that chain space. So I'm going to go ahead and slide my bead up to my hook. And now we are going to make a single crochet. So now we are going to chain three. And we're gonna skip that next chain three space 
and we're going to work a v-stitch into the top of the beaded single crochet below. So that's a treble crochet, a chain five space, and another treble crochet. Okay, and we're going to chain three and skip the next chain three space. And we're going to work a beaded single crochet in the chain five space of the next V-stitch. So go ahead and grab a bead. And make a single crochet in that chain five space. Chain three, skip the next chain three space and make a V stitch in the top of the beaded single crochet below. Now we're going to chain three and skip the next chain three space. We're going to work a beaded single crochet in the top of the chain five space of the next V stitch. So grab your bead and make a single crochet in the chain five space. Chain three. Skip the next chain three space and work a V stitch in the top of the next beaded single crochet. Chain three, skip the next chain three space, make a beaded single crochet in the top of the chain five space of the next v-stitch. Chain three, skip the next chain three space, make a v-stitch in the top of the next beaded single crochet. chain three and we are now at the beginning where we started at the beaded single crochet so we are going to slip stitch into the top of that first single crochet this is what your piece should look like as you can see it's already starting to bowl up so it will easily start to form around the bobble shape I recommend trying it on your bobble for size every couple of rounds. So now you should still have four beaded single crochet and four V stitches. In every round you should have the same amount. So take a moment to count how many V stitches and how many beaded single crochet you have. You should have just four of each. So now we're going to begin the next round. We're going to chain nine. Again, this is going to count as a treble crochet in a chain five space. So just part of a V stitch. We're going to finish off that V stitch by making a treble crochet in the same stitch. We're going to chain three now and skip the next chain three space. We're going to work a beaded single crochet in the top of that V-stitch right there in that chain five space. So go ahead and grab a bead and bring it to your hook. Make a single crochet. Chain three, skip the next chain three space. 
Make a V-stitch in the top of the beaded single crochet below. Now we're going to chain three, skip the next chain three space, and make a beaded single crochet in the chain five space of the V-stitch. So bring a bead flush to your hook and make a single crochet. Chain three, skip the next chain three space, make a V stitch in the top of the beaded single crochet below. Chain three, skip the next chain three space. Make a beaded single crochet in the next chain five space of the next V stitch. Chain three, skip the next chain three space. Make a V stitch in the top of the next beaded single crochet. Chain three, skip the next chain three space, make a beaded single crochet in the chain five space of the next V stitch. Chain three, skip the next chain three space, and we're going to finish this round by making a slip stitch into the fourth chain of our beginning chain nine. And to start the next round, I know it's gonna to have to start with a beaded single crochet. So I'm going to slip stitch into the next two chains to get me to the top of this chain five space. You should be seeing a pattern forming here. For every round that you start with a beaded single crochet, this is how you will begin. You'll chain one, place a bead flush to your hook, and single crochet in that first chain five space. Then you'll chain three, skip the next chain three space, and make a V stitch in the next beaded single crochet. You'll chain three. Skip the next chain three space, make a beaded single crochet. So the object is to put a beaded single crochet in every chain five space of the V stitches below, and then a V stitch in the top of every beaded single crochet below. And you're just gonna continue repeating this pattern until it almost completely covers the whole bobble. You only want it to go till it's about two thirds of the way down. So as you can see, the bobble cover only covers the top third of this bobble. So I've still got several rounds to go. But you want it to stretch over it nicely so that the pattern will really pop. So continue in this stitch pattern, like I showed you, until it's almost to the bottom of the bobble, and I'll meet you there. So here I've got my bobble cover nearly done. I'm going to count my rounds. I have seven rounds total of the stitch pattern.
If you add the two rounds that we started with, I have a total of nine rounds. I went ahead and painted my bobble black because I really wanted my pattern to stand out. So I'm going to finish this last round, which of course is slip stitching into the fourth chain. I'm also going to slip stitch into the next two chains because I want to end in the center of the chain five space. So again, this is the last round and I'm going to show you how to close it up. So go ahead and chain one and make a single crochet. And again, this is in the top of the V-stitch. So make it real loose so it doesn't come undone and slide the cover onto your Christmas bobble. As you can see, it's very tight and that's really the way you want it. If you want the pattern to shine through, you want it to be pretty snug. So as you can see, it's nearly covering the bottom, but it's not quite. I'm going to bring those bottoms together. To do this, I'm going to slip stitch into the chain five space of every V stitch on that last round. until I get back to where I started. So go ahead and slip stitch into the next chain five space of the next V stitch. This is a challenge. Take your time. You want it to be snug. Now I'm going to skip to the next V stitch and slip stitch into that chain five space. I'm going to skip to the last V stitch and slip stitch into that chain five space. And to close it off, I'm going to slip stitch into the top of the single crochet that I started this round with. It is very challenging, just work slowly. And as you can see, it's closed. Now, if you don't plan to add a tassel to the bottom, you could add a bead here, but I do. So I'm not adding a bead to the bottom. So fasten off, leaving you a length of tail. We're gonna hide this tail inside the tassel. So you want it to be kind of long. I'm gonna add the tassel right there where we've brought it together. So to make a tassel, I just use my fingers. I'm going to wrap the yarn about 20 times around my fingers. The thicker your yarn, the fewer times you want to wrap your fingers. You could also use a piece of cardboard that's about four or five inches in width. So go ahead and cut the bottoms evenly. Grab your bobble and then get a hook and put it underneath where we joined that last round. We're going to take the ends of our tassel and slide one end through. You may need a bigger hook, but I didn't grab a bigger hook. You really just want to pull one end through. Now bring the ends to where they are even. And we are going to secure the tassel by wrapping around the top about a half inch from the bottom. 
So I cut a length of yarn. I didn't measure it. I'd say it was probably at least 15 inches long. And then I cut it again. And the reason that I decided to cut it again is because I want it to be extra strong. So I doubled up my strands here, but you don't have to do that. And I'm simply going to tie these strands about a half inch from the top or the bottom of the bobble. And because I double knotted it, one wants to stick up. So I'm going to grab my yarn needle and tuck it down inside. Now I'm going to grab a comb and kind of just comb out the tail. And then I'm going to cut the ends to where they're even. And your boho bobble is done. It's that simple. You could also add beads to the tassel if you wanted to. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial today. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching.